So this is a four stroke mower. So you've got fuel and oil, separate compartments, it's like a car, okay? So we'll do a basic little service on a four stroke on a mower. So this, what I would normally do, say, let's say I first started, I would wash everything and clean everything once a week. Every piece of equipment. I do it out in my front yard. I live on a street. I've got six franchisees, Jim's franchisees, in my estate, plus about another five independents. But I have 20 jobs in my estate, and they're all from knocking on my door or stopping at the front. So I'm known as the Jim's bloke because I'm out the front. So once a week, I'd wash every piece of equipment down. So when I say I'd put degreaser all over it, wash it all down, wash all the top down. The important part, when it's on rainy days like today, or when the grass is wet, a part of, you know, everyone says, oh, you can't mow in the wet. Well, I know it's really wet, but let's just say the grass is wet, not the ground. You can, but there's a few keys. One is this deck. So you'll know when this deck, this deck starts to fill up, this, the grass sticks on the deck, and it starts to fill up the deck. So now the blades are sort of labouring as they're cutting into that wet grass or whatever stuck, mud, whatever, stuck on the side of this. So trying to keep this deck clean. So it might be, sometimes you might be on a job like today and the grass is so wet, you still mow it, but you might have to clean this mower out a couple of times in the job, or you might have to clean the mower out once. You know, so I just use, you can use a paint scraper, even an old blade, just to scratch that all out, okay? So keeping that deck clean is really important. So when I used to do a full wash, I'd wash the whole deck out, so it was all nice and clean. Clean it up, take the filters out. Oh, I've got to tell you, I do this every time. When you tip a mower, a four-stroke mower, tip it to where the oil is. Don't tip it back this way and get the oil running through the mower. You have to clean everything and flush it all out. So tip it, oil, I always think about it, oil in, oil out. So you tip it to the side, okay? Sorry, I do it every time. So I'd clean all this, wash it all down. Um, I used to get so pedantic in the early days, I'd even armor all the plastic bits. <laughs> but I figured if it was good for the F1s, it was good for me. Those things were so shiny and clean. And then, you know, the filters. So, with the filter, it's been raining a bit. Yeah. Um, so with the filters, this is an old model Honda, and it's got this snork on it. The new model Honda doesn't have the snork, so it's not there, it's just that, okay? So if, when you get the new model Honda, this time of the year, probably once a week spot, you should be cleaning that filter once a week, as I said, you clean the filter, blow it all out, take that off, blow this out, blow all that out. Without that in the dry, and when it starts to dry out, you might have to clean it two or three times a week. It gathers a lot more dust and rubbish in there, okay? So you need to probably, yeah, you need to be more aware of cleaning that out quite regularly, because you haven't got the snow dragging the dust away. Wipe that all in, I would fill it up with fuel. You know, check your oil, probably, I'd be checking my oil you know, a couple of times a week, making sure they're all good. No, just like that. So you cool. don't put any of that? No. Just whack it back in like that. Never, yeah, never had a problem. I hardly change filters on the mowers. Keep them nice and clean. I changed one the other day, and it was a machine I bought second hand when I bought stuff. I don't think the guy it just it clogged up a lot more. We cleaned it, but it just, yeah, the mower wouldn't start. You know, it took the filter out and if it wasn't running real well. As much as I try and teach my boys, well, if that happens, have a look at the filter, maybe take the filter out and start it, see what's going on. It might have been something missed, or it might be full of dust. So we give it a bang out and it'll start going. Anyone ever hear when they're mowing and you hear that, ooh, ooh. It drives me nuts when there's people in the street mower. It's because that filter's got so clogged up, it's not breathing enough air into the motor. So that's why it's running like that. So if you get that, and you've forgotten the point, you know, we all forget occasionally it gets dusty, don't worry. 
we get busy, it's busy this time of year, and you just get, you're working more than you're supposed to be doing your maintenance. So that would be my weekly thing on every piece of equipment. Wash it all down, clean filters. Yep. Uh, how can you get a new filter? Do you say, do you just... Oh, uh, on these ones, I don't reckon I really, maybe once in its lifetime, you get about two years out of these, out of the self-propelled. Because the gearbox goes, the wheels start to go, things start to break. Gearbox is, you know, seven or eight hundred dollars or something. This is about seventeen hundred and fifty bucks or something, roughly. So you start to think, uh, it's probably just time to get a new mower. So you invest in a new mower. You know, two years, if you're using it every day, ten mows a day, done a you know, thousand mows. <coughs> it hasn't cost you a lot to use the mower. So yeah, you probably get about two years out of it. You might get more, depending on what you're using, but normally I find about two years. So that would be every, so sometimes you get these paper filters. You can see that one's a little bit dirty, four stroke paper filter. So keeping spare filters, the good way of cleaning is break cleaner, spray it on, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then just blow the hell out of it with your compressor. And you would normally get fairly clean new, um, filter. So, oil. I change oil once a month. Okay? So if you use a Honda, it says you must use Honda oil. So the warranty is three months. You've got to use Honda grade oil. I don't know how they, don't, how they know it's Honda oil. It's got H molecules, I don't know. But I'd be using Honda oil until your warranty runs out then. Use a good four-stroke oil. Use good quality four-stroke oil. Okay, so now to change your oil, it's pretty simple. There is a sub pipe down here that you can use and drain the oil out, but why do you want to drain it into this deck to try and clean it up? I have no idea. Anyone tried to clean oil up? You drop a tablespoon and it's like you drop two litres of oil, it just seems to grow and you can't clean it up. So, easiest way is, now I didn't bring it, uh, what's it work, so sorry. Just grab a little flat container Tip it sideways and let the oil drain out. Okay, just tip it, leave it on its side, drain it out. 650 ml of oil goes back in. So that's an oil change, pretty simple thing. So the other thing is blaze. You need to have so sometimes you can see here, this is, the thrower is what's good to get it into the catcher. That's what's throw it into the back of the catcher, is the thrower. Sometimes, the thrower, it's not this cutting edge that gets compromised, it's this. Stuff starts to hit it, rocks, shit, um, sticks, whatever. And you can see, three of those aren't too bad, but one of those probably cocked the belt somewhere. And one day it was fine, the next day it's looked like that. So it's not going to catch as well or mulch as well as it should. You can still cut and you can probably still get away with it, but you might be mowing half a week. Don't stress, you can still get through your day, it might take a bit longer, you've just got to try and get out. It does happen. But I recommend you change your blades once a month. Okay? That's what I used to do. And as you get a bit more experience, you'll start to look at the blades and you go, that'll be alright and we'll let them go in a couple of weeks. I just change them once a month, period. Just did it. Because that's, old Trev told me, that's what he did, or he, and he changed his oil every week. But he um, used to sit in his garage and drink beer while he was servicing his machinery on a Sunday, so he was just out of his larry, sitting out there, so that's what he loved to do. So, changing your blades. So your blades can look like that. I'll show you the set of blades, but, it's handy, I reckon, well, you could go home, let's say you cut a lot of sticks and that and the blade gets like that, and then you've got to change one midweek, okay? I reckon it's handy to have a disc, a spare disc and one made up, because then all you've got to do, say it's Wednesday night, Come on, late, and you notice the 
blade's no good. Or you might even have that in your truck, depending on how much stuff you want to carry. So you can imagine doing that and then knocking another one on. It's about a minute's job. Okay? So it's handy if you could have that. But then to change a set of blades, it's not that difficult. Oh, I've left it there. Change a set of blades. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can do them by hand. It's all good. It just take a bit longer. So when you change your blades, New blades, new bolts. Okay? It's what they recommend you do. Bolts get compromised as well. You don't want a blade flying off, hitting you in the leg, or God was taking anyone else, or through a window, or whatever, in the side of the car, whatever. So, chain, changing the bolts. So, So when you go to change these, I know this sounds really stupid. But what I'd be doing is changing them one at a time. You take all four off, which way does this go? Yeah. That way, this way, I don't know. I still change them one at a time, just for the habit. But if you're gonna take them all off, take a photo. Okay, so you got some idea. Okay, and then, Occasionally, also what might happen is someone So there's also this little washer So when you come to put the blade on It goes bolt and then it'll go through And that little washer Occasionally what happens is when you run over a root Or you've got some, or come off the side of the gutter Or you hit something a little bit higher a rock that little washer will snap. And then occasionally what will happen is the blade gets, or well, the blade will go under and get caught. So what you can do there is that if that happens, you can still get through the day, but you might every time you start, you might have to kick it out every time you go to engage blades. It comes a bit of a pain in the ass. So you try not to run over roots and things because it damages that little washer, and that little washer is critical to stopping those things. Wash up, make it through. Can everyone see? So all you do is go around all four blades. You can put four of these throwers on. I'm to have two throwers and two flatter ones like that. I sometimes run on, I've run on four flats for a couple of years because I bought 500 blades for a dollar a blade and they're all those. It <coughs> make a difference. That probably helped catch a little bit better, but not noticeably. Okay? So the other, does that make sense there? Then all you do is just snap it back on. So I'd be doing that on a monthly basis. Now grinding and sharpening the blades, I don't reckon it makes any difference. That's my opinion. I've done it to where you can only carve a roast with it. Makes no difference. Sometimes, you know, the dandelions or paspalum, people go, it doesn't cut. What happens is the mower comes along and it hits it and flattens it down. It doesn't get time to cut. Well, this might have flattened it off or it ran over the wheel, flattened them off, and it stayed down and it caught on a piece of grass. And you look back and there's a dandelion standing up. It's got not a lot to do with your blades. It's just the nature of what you're cutting. So sometimes you might have to, well, I'll put this back on and I'll show you. So that's about it. So now when you've just cleaned it and you go out on Monday, you've got this beautiful, nice new clean machine that's gonna run fairly solid. The only things that are probably gonna go wrong with it now is a cable might break, a rip cord might break. Have a look at the rip cords. You can probably prevent that. Start looking at it and you go, that looks like it's starting to feather. So if you take it into the shop or something else, you know, six months or something, just get them to change the rip cord. 
anyone ever change one of these with those coils? You've got to have about 48 arms to try and hold it all together. And then you see someone that knows how they're doing it and they make it look so simple. You go, that doesn't look that hard. No, just get them to do it. Remember the guy with the splits I talked about? He never ever changed the blade on his mower. That, he didn't even change blades, he got the mower shop to do it. See that blade? That blade was in pretty good nick. And he would mow with even worse. But, it's what I'm saying. His idea was just get the mower shop to do it, and I do what I do, and they do what I, they do. And we work out well. It's a fairly simple thing just to clean that. And there's nothing better than on Monday morning coming out to work and you're ready to go. Even filling up all your equipment before the end of each day, because that way when you come to work the next day, everything's full. So you're ready to go. You're not spending 10 minutes filling up, or all of a sudden you haven't got, you're filled up, now you've got not enough fuel for the day. Unless you've filled up at the end of the day and I need to go and mix some two stroke and buy some, or buy some four normal plain fuel on your way home. You can do it oh, in the middle of the day. So little bits of savings, if you just think about how you're doing it. But that's basically it to service a mile. It's pretty simple. <laughs>